Well, good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Yeah, you like that, don't you? Woo! Yeah, happy St. Patrick's Day. Look to the person if they're not wearing green, pinch them. Don't do that. Don't. I'm just kidding around. But happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, it's so good to be with you all here on this Sunday morning. A lot of awesome things happening, and so so pumped about uh, this Sunday. So if this is your first time with us, we would love to be able to connect with you, get to know you, and for you to get to know Asbury Church, because our hope is that you find a home here right at Asbury Church. And so all you have to do is just scan a QR code, text that number, just say welcome, and we'll take care of the rest. Again, this is our way of just wanting to get to know you and for you to get to know uh, Asbury Church. Well, I don't know if you noticed, but there was a lot of really hard work that happened yesterday as the campus got beautified and there's a lot of mulch, pine straw, a lot of hard work. So if you showed up, thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody give it a clap. That's awesome. Thank you for all your hard work. You know, and it kind of excites me as we get this little bit of a tease of just like, 
what the campus can really look like because as we're going forward with our, our capital campaign, like the things that we're, we're pushing and wanting to have that money for is to make this campus look so much better than what it is. And so for you to find out more about the capital campaign, there is a session right after this service at 10 30, and it's going to just lay the foundations of what we're up to. And yeah, it's not some of the, the bigger things, but what we're doing is so essential and going to make everything around here look so much, so much better. Uh, and so we're excited about it as it's laying a foundation for where we want to go uh, in the future. So come on out right after this, ser this service at 1030 to, to find out more. Uh, well, the next thing that we have going up is this kind of came up for us is, is, is we, they, we have an opportunity to stream the chosen season four episodes one and two. And so it's going to be happening this Friday, this Friday. Everybody say this Friday, this Friday. This Friday at 5 o'clock is, is episode 1, and then at 6.30 is going to be episode 2. Episode 1 is at 5, episode 2 is at 6.30. It is this Friday in this space, and so you want to come on out, check out The Chosen. Uh, come out this Friday. Again, episode 1 is at 5, episode 2 is at 6.30. 30. Well, last but certainly not least is Holy Week is rapidly approaching. And so we have three things to really talk about. First is Monday, Thursday. That service is over in our South Building at 6.30. It's a great time to come on out and really start off that week of, of Holy Week as we come into a time of worshiping and reflecting upon what Christ did for us, what, what it meant for God's one and only Son to come into the world for us on that rescue mission, to bring us into that relationship with Him. So it starts with Monday, Thursday at 6.30, and then we have Good Friday, which is right here in this space, again at 6.30. And of course, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, there is child care available. So if you have kids, have them come on out. They can either be here in the services with you, or they can be over in the South Building in the children's area. But here at Good Friday, really, that focus is of Jesus going to the cross and dying for our sins. And then we get to the, the, the grand thing of Easter here at Asbury Church. And so we have three options for you. We have a sunrise service at 6.30 over in the amphitheater, right over here in this space. And then our contemporary service right here at 9.30. And then 11 o'clock is our traditional uh, service in the South Building. A lot of awesome things happening here. There's more things happening here at Asbury. If you want to know more, go check out our e-bulletin that gets sent out every single Friday and get in the know. Well, that's all I have for you. You. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Good morning, Asbury. Let's stand up together. So grateful to be with you and worship the Lord together. Let's sing this together. Wandering into the night Wanting a place to hide This weary soul This bag of bones I try with all my might But I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting Yeah, that word Just when I just when I ran out of the road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me that I was not alone. He picked me up, turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because you healed my heart, you saved my name. I thank you, Savior. I thank God. I cannot deny what I've seen. Got no choice but to believe my doubts are burning like ashes in the wind. So long to my old friend. Burden and bitterness, you can just keep them moving. Now you ain't welcome here. From now till I 
I walk streets of gold, I sing of how you stay my soul. This wayward son has found his way back home. Sing it out. You pick me up, you turn me around, you place my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior, because you heal my heart, you change my name. I'm not the same. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior. I thank God. Sing this out. The hill lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. The hill lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free, oh, and hell lost another one. I am free, I am free, oh, I am free. Cause hell lost another one. I am free, I am free. You pick me up, you pick me up, you turn me around, you place my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because you heal my heart. Change my name forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the master. I thank the savior. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. Man, yeah, give, give God a praise offering. You can take a seat for just a second. Or actually, yeah, we have a testimony, right? Yeah, you can take a seat. Church, it is so good to see everybody. I want to invite Kevin Summers to come forward. Uh, Kevin uh, is going to share a little bit about what Asbury means to him and about the importance of this campaign that we're in. Kevin, thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Is this working? Okay. I'm Kevin, as Jonathan said, I'm currently the head usher here at Asbury. Um, my wife and I do a lot of volunteering over the years. I'm also involved with the Habitat mission and help lead the group, so some of you are familiar with that. This church has always been important to our family and we'll continue to support the, this church in many ways. I joined the church about 27 years ago. My first son was born um, a few months prior. We moved to Raleigh and both my boys were raised in this church. They attended preschool. Uh, Sunday school. They were confirmed here as teenagers, and they grew up to be fine young adults that are currently married. And I'm hoping that someday grandchildren will come and join this church as well. This church has always been important to my family, and uh, we'll continue to support it in many ways. In 2012, my first wife Jennifer passed away from cancer and uh, joined Jesus in heaven. That was a very tough time period for us my boys were 14 and 16 years old at the time. This church family really stepped forward for us. The life group that I was in at the time came and immediately provided meals, house cleaning, and other support. The church staff was there to provide grief counseling and other support. And the church family here in this room were there to pray for us and to make us feel like this was a really comfortable place to be. It really got us through a tough time and as a result, I grew stronger in our relationship with God and this church. We're coming to this church, a place that we call home. Our family will continue to support this church with our prayers, our presence, our tithe, and our service. We've also made a commitment because of my history of this church, a three-year commitment to support the foundations for the future capital campaign. Because we feel like this church provides a solid foundation, and we want to provide a solid foundation for future generations, including hopefully my grandchildren. So I'm, I'm providing support, and I'm hoping that you will pray with me and also support this church and our initiatives to provide a solid foundation for Asbury for today and beyond. Thank you. Kevin, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Let's stand back up and worship together. Together. The 
thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name, your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry All creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever. And if you've been, and if you've been forgiven, and if you've been redeemed, Sing a song forever to the Lamb. And if you walk in freedom, and if you bear His name, sing a song forever to the Lamb. Well, we'll sing a song forever and amen, and the angels cry. Oh, creation cries holy you are lifted high holy holy forever hear your people sing hear your people sing holy to the king of kings the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all let's sing it out to him your name your name is the highest your name the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones all thrones and dominions all powers and possessions your name stands above them all and the angels cry bled and died for me 
I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down. Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore, for endless days. shall return. He shall return in robes of white. The blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints. My gaze transfixed on Jesus' Praise the name. thank you that you are the Lord our God that you are so good that you are merciful thank you Jesus that you went to the cross on our behalf we remember you in this season of Lent and we remember the journey that you walked on earth that you walked in our shoes Lord that you've been tempted as we are tempted and you know what it's like to be human 
And we remember the path that you, you took in this season to Jerusalem and ultimately to the cross. And because of that, Lord, we just, we want you to know in this season, Lord, that we're sorry for all the ways that we have drifted from you. We repent. We turn to you, Jesus. We acknowledge how much we need you, Lord. So come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts, enlighten our minds, bring revelation through your word this morning, and we pray it in your name, Jesus. Amen. Good morning, church. Uh, as we get going this morning, just ask that one of the older ladies sitting in the lobby is in the hospital right now, Mary Miles, and I just ask that you just uh, keep her in your thoughts and in your prayers. Uh, in this season here at Asbury, we are in the middle of this Foundations for the Future campaign. Uh, we're in week three of four. Uh, we've talked about the importance of vision, to know where you're going, to know what needs to be done. Uh, we talked about last week uh, building with an impact, what impact uh, it has when we're able to lay foundations uh, in our church, in our community, in our families. Today we turn to sacrifice and investment, sacrifice and investment. Uh, the scripture lesson this morning comes from Matthew, uh, and I'll be reading from chapter 25, uh, and I'll be reading verses uh, 14 to 30. So hear now this word from God. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money after a long time the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them the man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five master he said you entrusted me with five bags of gold see I have gained five more his master replied well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come, share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. 
Come, share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown, and I gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers, so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever does not have, whoever, who, for whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your amazing, never-ending love for us and the world. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity on this beautiful morning to gather and fellowship with each other and to worship you, to set our eyes, Lord, on, on your word and what you would say to us in this season. Lord, we uh, pray that you would just continue to pour out your Holy Spirit in this place, in each of our hearts. Lord, work to take the rough edges away. Let the, the cares and concerns that we brought into this place melt away so we may experience your love, so we may hear your voice, so we may be transformed by the power of your Spirit. Hide now this messenger in the shadow of your cross so you may speak into our lives today. Fill us with your love and peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In 2021, uh, Jessica Roca uh, graduated from the University of California in San Diego. And one of the things she did upon graduation was she went back to where she grew up and she wanted to take a, a picture that honored her parents. Uh, you see, her parents, uh, when she was just a baby, uh, left their home in Mexico uh, and came to the United States seeking a better life for their family and for their little girl. Uh, as many who come across the border who look for jobs, uh, they ended up in the fields. Uh, in the fields in California, uh, planting, maintaining uh, uh, crops, uh, and uh, harvesting those fields, and then getting up and doing it all over again uh, in the next season. Uh, she said that when she was a teenager, uh, that her dad forced her to go into the fields with uh, her mother and himself. And to work. And she said often it would be night shifts. Said we would she said, I remember night after night planting strawberry plants all night long and tending uh, the crops uh, and making sure there was plenty of water, making sure the weeds were out, uh, to make sure that they produced fruit. Uh, and then the days where we spent in harvest, sometimes even missing school to help bring the harvest in. Her dad wanted to, uh, pl to place upon her the importance of getting uh, education in her life and didn't want her to take it for granted, and so that's why he wanted her to work out in the fields. After she graduated uh, high school, she went on to college, and as she graduated college in 2021... She was thankful for the sacrifice, for the investment that her parents spent in giving her the best life they possibly could. 
And so she took this picture with them in the fields that she worked in her cap and gown alongside her parents where many hours were spent trying to make a living, trying to make a better life. She said, the person I am today, the one that's going on to work in law enforcement, to represent the Latino community uh, in law enforcement, she said, I owe everything to the sacrifice of my parents. Friends, as we consider and ponder our faith today, sacrifice uh, is so important to who we are as Christians. Uh, think about it. Uh, the very verse that kind of sums up the Christian faith that a lot, many of us learn as small children uh, is about sacrifice for God so loved the world that he gave that he gave in sacrifice his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life so everything we are as Christians relates back to that gift of sacrifice and our call as Christians is to live a life of investment, to live a life of sacrifice, not so much for necessarily uh, ourselves, but to live a life of sacrifice, building and expanding God's kingdom. Harry Ironside uh, said it well. Uh, he kind of summed up the Christian journey. Uh, Harry Ironside was a, a great preacher of, of last century. Uh, and he preached at Moody Bible Church for 20 years before his death. And he said, no sacrifice should be too great for him who gave himself for us. Right? No sacrifice. It's the Christian life. A life of sacrifice, of investment. Because of what God has done for us. Because he loved us. We're called to give back to help build up the church, to help expand his kingdom, that while we have breath, that all of our time, all of our talents, all of our treasures, all of our capacities, that we use them for the glory of God. As we uh, go back and reflect on the scripture passage this morning, uh, we see that Jesus is doing a series of teachings on when he's going to come back, on the second coming, uh, on the day of judgment. Uh, and, uh, and he teaches in parables. And so it is with the one that we read today, the parable of the talents. The version I read uh, said bags of gold. A talent uh, or the bag of gold uh, that was referred to a talent uh, represented in today's time $1.3 million, all right? And so in the reference, uh, it would have per gotten people's attention, right, to receive a talent uh, from the master. And so we're told the master was going away on a journey for a period of time. We don't know the time. We don't know the time that he was on the journey and when he returned. But what we know is he gave one, one servant five talents. Uh, and so you can do the math on that. Another servant, two bags. And another servant, one bag. And he said, watch over these while I'm away until I come back. We know what the scripture tells us, that the one who had five uh, went to work, it says. Put those five to work. Investing. Uh, sacrificing to make sure that that, that five increased uh, in relation to us and our Christian walk. Let me tell you that these parables are not as they seem. One, uh, the parables all relate to teaching on the kingdom of God. And two, Jesus in this parable was not just talking about money. He was talking about everything we have, our time, our talents, our, our abilities, our treasures, our capacities, all of it. And he's saying, you have been given with a certain capacity. For some, it's five. For others, it's two. For others, it's one. 
And in that capacity, your time, your treasures, your talents, you are asked, you're called to expand God's kingdom, to build up the church, to sacrifice and invest what God has given you while you have breath for His glory and the glory of His kingdom. And so we're called to enter into that life. We know the one with five bags did that, and it yielded five talents more. We know the one with two bags, uh, it yielded two bags more. And then we know that the one decided to hide his bag because he knew his master was shrewd and he wanted to make sure he had the one. And as we take that to the parable, to the teaching of the kingdom, that would be like if God has given you and I abilities. You and I have received time. You and I have received spiritual gifts, talents that we can use to impact others. You and I have received uh, capacity uh, about what we can give where we can be generous to others. Uh, and it would be like God giving us all of that, and in our life we do nothing for the kingdom. We just keep it for ourselves. We hide it away, and we use it just for our benefit. Uh, that one servant used it for his benefit. He wanted to make sure he could give that one back to his master, right? Uh, and so we get the lesson the master comes back, representing Jesus coming back in the second coming, and then the day of judgment takes place. The one who had expanded five to five uh, received even more. Uh, the one who had done two uh, received another two, and they received, well done, good and faithful servant. And the one who had hid away, who had been afraid of his master, who had hid what the master had given him away was condemned to darkness for the rest of his days to the weeping and gnashing of teeth Jesus has told us what that place is hell uh, in other places in the scripture and so Jesus condemns the one who did not invest, who did not sacrifice, who did not use the time, the talents, the treasures, his capacity or her capacity to expand God's kingdom. It's both a sobering message, but yet it's also a message of call, of reminding us why we are here, who we are, whose we are, and who we're called to be. The one could represent, if, uh, uh, if you go back and read commentaries, it could represent the one that never comes to faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, God has given them all of the ability, all of the knowledge, and yet they do not receive the, the gift that God's given. The one could represent the one that never gives, but just takes. Uh, and so... Jesus today is reminding us we're to live a life of sacrifice and investment. How do we do that? Uh, Paul writes in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies. What Paul was saying, your very being, all that you are, uh, all that you do, as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. That everything we do and say is a holy and acceptable offering to God. Think about what you've said this week around friends watching ball games. Uh, think about what you've said at work and to other people, right? Has it been holy and pleasing to God? Think about uh, your time at work this week. Think about your time driving this week. Think about your time with family and even those difficult relationships. Has everything that you've said and done been holy and pleasing and acceptable to God in this week? That's the challenge for us. And so how do we do that? Paul said live our lives 
holy living sacrifice. And so how do we do that? Paul continues, and I invite you to go through and read Romans chapter 12 on your own. I'm just going to sum it up for you. Paul said, hey, we're all in this together. We're the body of Christ, and, and we're all important. Uh, we're not going to walk in this world and, uh, and say that, uh, uh, you know, say we're a basketball player. We miss a shot on the court, right? We're not going to cut off our hand because we miss that shot, right? We're not going to trip and fall and cut off our leg because we tripped and fall, fail, right? Uh, we're not going to do that. And the body of Christ is equally important. We're all in this together. The fingers, the toes, the feet, the arms, the legs, the whole of the body is important to accomplishing God's mission and vision to bring his kingdom, to make his kingdom known in every facet of life, at home, at work, in our community, throughout the world. And so it's so important. And Paul writes uh, several things. Now these gifts, this is a gift list that Paul wrote. On the one hand, it's gifts that all of us will do probably some point in our life. Uh, and all of us will participate in these gifts on a regular basis for some of us. Uh, but Paul writes that there are some who are given extra capacity and ability in these areas. And so the first one's prophesying. Prophesying is speaking a word of God for people today. And you might say, Pastor, that's, that might be you. That's not me. But if you've got a child and a grandchild, you have at least the opportunity to prophesy, to speak a word of God into their lives in this uh, sometimes chaotic world that we live in to teach them about the kingdom of God. And so prophesying, yes, some have a higher ability, uh, but we're all going to be doing that, Lord willing. Uh, serving is another one. Serving is someone laid out this altar today. They serve. We've got hosts who are serving and greeters when you came in the door. We've got people on the soundboard in the back, people in the live stream room. We've got the band that's up here today serving, right? Some have greater capacity and ability in some things, but we can all serve. Everybody, if you can walk and breathe, you could be out there helping what we did yesterday with the yard of the church, right? Uh, in no matter how your body is, there was something you could do sitting, something you could do standing. Uh, and so serving is something we'll all do, but some have a greater capacity and ability. Uh, teaching is another one of those things. Uh, and uh, whether it be in the Sunday school classroom with youth, and we'll continue on with the next list, uh, encouraging uh, encouraging, giving someone a great word. Some people do it once in a while. Some people do it all the time. They thank people. They, they help people. They, they give some uplifting word to them. Giving is our financial generosity, right? Uh, to be able to, in, uh, to give, some have a greater capacity, right? Uh, there's people in this world who could fund the whole foundations for the future campaign. Others, uh, there are some that in a three-year commitment are going to do all they can to sacrifice uh, $1,000 a year to get $3,000. And it's going to be a huge sacrifice. Uh, and so giving. Uh, leading is another one, to be in leadership. Uh, some may say, I, I'm not called to be a leader. Again, if you're a mother, a father, a grandparent, an uh, aunt, an uh, uncle, uh, you're, you've got leading capability. You're going to lead your family in some point or have that capacity. Uh, others have a gift of leadership to guide committees, to guide teams, uh, to, to do great things in the workplace, in the school, to do great place in the, things in the world, in the church showing mercy, uh, to be able to uh, share God's love by helping the least of these. Hopefully we'll all do that in some way. But others just have a heart passion. It's what they give their life for. They retire early to do it, and they pour all their time into it, and they help lead the rest of us into it. And so Paul says, live your lives as 
as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, everything you say and do. And then he offers ways that we can do it. And those are just a few you could add to the list. But how are we living our lives as living sacrifices? Asbury Church, today and in this season of Lent, Lent is a time to focus on sacrifice, on God's love for us, and on our call uh, to live our lives sacrificially. And so the question beckons, what can we do for God's kingdom to help expand it? What can we do to help build up Asbury Church? What can we do to bring about the kingdom at home? What can we do to bring about the kingdom in the workplace? May we not take our call, who we are created to be for granted, but may we do everything in our power to live our lives sacrificially, to invest with everything we've been given, our time, our talents, our treasures, our abilities, our capacity. May we strive to do just that. In uh, 1962, Gladys Kidd took out an advertisement. There's Gladys uh, on the left. Took out an advertisement in the large San Francisco paper. And the advertisement went like this. Uh, my husband faces death in the gas chamber for a murder he didn't commit. I am willing for any lawyer who will take his case uh, to be in servitude. And basically what she was doing was saying, hey, I'll be your indentured servant. And I'll either be your maid, your housekeeper, or your cook for 10 years for any lawyer who's willing to take the case and get him free and clear. One lawyer in San Francisco, one of the best, was Vincent Hallinan, uh, and uh, well-renowned as a trial lawyer in San Francisco and California. Uh, and he saw the advertisement in the paper, and he had uh, his heart was pulled to Miss Gladys and to her predicament and to her husband's predicament. And so he wanted more information. He wanted to look over the case to see, uh, did it indeed have holes? Was he indeed an innocent man? And as he looked over the case, he ended up taking the case. And he worked the case. Now you all, uh, if you know anything about law, when it comes to a, a capital crime, when it comes to a murder case, how long those cases can draw out? Months, maybe years. Uh, and then when the case comes, uh, it can be trialed, and then it can go up for appeal time and time again. There's a lot of effort in work in collecting evidence uh, and interviewing people and making sure that everybody is ready for the trial. It takes hours. And Vincent worked that case, and the end result was the jury found him not guilty. All charges were dropped. And he went to Miss Gladys, and he said, you don't owe me anything. He did it for free. She was willing to sacrifice her life for 10 years for her husband, whom she loved, uh, to get him off. And the lawyer sacrificed his time, his ability, his resources, his capacity to help get Mr. Kidd off free and clear. Friends, go back to our faith journey in relation to that story. We're called to use our gifts in sacrifice to use whatever abilities we have. For Miss Gladys, it was cleaning and cooking and taking care of the house, right? For Vincent, it was using his high intellect, his powers of, of being able to litigate in the courtroom to help get that man off and to have all charges dropped, right? 
For us, we have various gifts and talents and abilities and capacities. Friends, may we use them for the glory of the kingdom. May we use them to help God expand his kingdom. May we use them to help build up the church. Amen. As we go to prayer today, I want you to just reflect for a moment. Close your eyes. I want to think about you to think about your top two or three abilities. What are your top two or three abilities that maybe you've used them in career, maybe to help family, maybe to help friends? What are your top two or three abilities? I want you to think how you use your time. Where is most of your time spent besides sleeping? Where is most of your time spent? Is it at work? Is it with family? Is it with, uh, with traveling? Where is most of your time spent? I want you to ponder your treasure. Think about what God's given you, your, your capacity, your resources. Are you struggling month to month to make it to pay the bills? Are you retired and have a comfortable life? Are you working and have uh, plenty in this world? Multiple cars, maybe more than one house? We are blessed. God has given us time He's given us talents. He's given us abilities. May we not take them for granted. Heavenly Father, thank you for your amazing love for us, for your sacrifice, that you so loved the world that you came down from your heavenly throne to teach us about your kingdom, to reveal that your kingdom had come on this earth, and to teach us to share and expand your kingdom, to build your kingdom and to die on a cross so we may have an everlasting relationship with you, so we may have salvation and inherit all the riches of your glorious kingdom now and for all eternity. Lord, uh, strengthen our faith. Help us, Lord, to live our lives as holy and living sacrifices in union with your will for us in union with your design for us so we can make a difference for your kingdom for your church make a difference in our families in the workplace and out in the world so we may share your love and your good news Lord strengthen us to do just that In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There are envelopes on uh, every other chair, and so I invite you now, if you don't mind, just pull that envelope out, open it up. Uh, In that envelope is a green bookmark. Uh, Not because it's St. Patty's Day. We did that a long time ago, but it's pretty cool. If you didn't wear green, hold on to the bookmark, right? Uh, and uh, But it's got a two-week prayer uh, pattern. So you can pray for Asbury Church. You can pray for our staff, for our ministries. You can pray, and we hope that you'll use that not only in this season, but beyond this season. Uh, this is a commitment card to the campaign. It's a, it's a three-year campaign. Uh, we're seeking to raise $2.5 million over a three-year period. How does that work? Uh, we take pledges, and that's what this card is about. It's what next Sunday's about. It's Commitment Sunday. Next Sunday, we'll come, and we'll ask you to lay your pledges up on the altar. Eighteen leaders in our church have given uh, over $650,000 to start us off towards the $2.5 million. And we ask uh, all of the other 200-plus families... Uh, 300 plus families to come alongside us in that endeavor to to join us 
in, in committing and, and sacrificing to build foundations for the future of Asbury. Uh, we hope that you'll stay after this service, immediately after this service. Uh, we're going to turn this room and it'll take five minutes uh, into a sitting area, and we're going to tell anybody who wants to know more about the campaign, give you all the details. But we're going to have new carpet. We're going to have a, a new look up front. Uh, we're going to have uh, new lights. Half these lights are borrowed. We're going to have our own lights. Uh, we're going to uh, have enhanced sound through mics in both services and live stream. We're going to drive not on cracking pavement, but on new blacktop. Uh, no longer do you have to pull into the office and scrape the bottom of your car like I did about a month ago uh, on the bumpy pavement but where the tree roots are growing. Right? We're going to take care of all that. Uh, and much more, a foundation for the future of ministry here at Asbury Church. Uh, the three-year commitment, you can look. I pledge to give a one-time gift. Some will give from one pot. Uh, some a weekly gift, and there's a breakdown. We'll give it to you. We'll give you a packet if you come stay after at 1030. Uh, and it's got a chart on there, uh, a th breakdown of uh, what it means uh, if you gave $5,000 over the course of the campaign, how that would break down weekly, how it would break down monthly. Some might give monthly or an uh, annual gift of three years. How the three years works is this. You might be able to give $25,000 a year. Well, that's a total gift of $75,000. You might be able to give $2,500 a year. That's a total gift of $7,500, and you can do other numbers. But we ask that you prayerfully take this. This is an Ask Sunday. And ask that as part of your, your living sacrificially and building up God's kingdom and church, that you would pray about what God's calling you to do here at Asbury over the next three years for this campaign. And we'll take all the pledges and whatever God gives us next week, we'll be able to tackle those projects uh, that are needed here at the church to continue to lay a foundation for our children. As Kevin said, he hopes for his grandchildren one day, uh, for our families now, and for people who will come in the weeks, months, and years ahead. What is God calling you to do in this season? May we strive to give. Going back to Harry Ironside's quote, because he gave everything for us. Amen. I, I, I hope you will stay after the service. Just a quick note about that. As soon as Mark and the band play our final song, Mark's going to dismiss us. Uh, and when he does, we ask that you share in fellowship out in the lobby so we can convert this room. And if you're staying, grab something to drink, go to the restroom, come back in, and we'll start promptly at, uh, I guess, quarter till now. So, so let us stand, if you're able, and let's continue to praise our God through song. Sing this together. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, for Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be ift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from me. Take my 
silver and my gold not a mite would I withhold take my intellect and use every power as you choose here am I my will take my will and make it thine it shall be no longer mine take my heart it is thine own it shall be thy royal throne take my love your feet is treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. Sing this together. Here am I. one more time. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, for Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Amen. It's been so good to be with you today, Asbury. As Jonathan said, um, we're going to head out the doors. If you'd like to give today, there's giving boxes on the left or right, or you can always give online. If you plan to stay for that meeting, go grab a coffee, hang out for a few minutes, come back in. We're going to get that meeting started at quarter till. And for the rest of you, please go in peace. Amen.